Eloisa and Leon had been married for seven years already. And for just over five years, they had been desperately longing for children. But the Lord seemed in no hurry to bless them. Attempt after attempt, one consultation after another, all was in vain. The same sorrowful single line on the test and 0% HCG in the blood. The wait was so agonizing for them that they spoke less and less of the word family to describe their marital union. Without children, everything seemed gray and unreal to them. No, of course, they loved each other. It was precisely love that gave them the strength to keep trying. It's just that they had such views on married life, all for the sake of children. And just imagine, Nellie, clutching a paper napkin in her hand, Lotch complained to her best friend, Elena, year after year, the same hell, examinations, tests, empty results. Examinations. Tests. And. And. Elena took her friend's hand in hers and gently stroked it. They sat in the kitchen, and from the living room came the cheerful cries of children. Nellie and her husband Hugo had four of them. Two by plan, the rest came on their own, she joked about her little squad. And indeed, at first, they planned for their firstborn, but twins were born. The same story happened to them when they wanted to give birth to a third child. It seemed that poor Eloisa should go crazy from being next to such a fruitful woman, but no. Nellie had always been her reliable shoulder to lean on and wipe away tears. Their friendship began back in school. Back then, the small and unassuming Elena often fell victim to mockery. Nellie always had a sharp character and natural boldness, which only attracted more attention from bullies. But Eloisa always stood up for her, as if they were connected by an invisible thread of friendship since childhood. Lotch found the behavior of the lively short girl extremely fascinating, and Elena could instill confidence in people with just her presence. And since then, they were inseparable, even when each of them built her own family and became a young wife. Lotch, you know I'm always here, don't you? Elena said, smiling at her friend. We'll get through this together, I'm sure. And don't forget, my door is always open for you and Leon. We can share joy and sorrow together. Her friend's words sounded like balm to Eloise's soul. She felt that with each passing day, their friendship only grew stronger, becoming a support in the most difficult moments of life. Thank you, Nellie, she said, smiling through tears. I don't know what I would do without you. You're my guardian angel. Their conversation was interrupted by cries from the living room. Elena got up and hurriedly went to check what was happening there, while Eloisa remained sitting at the table, burying her face in her hands. But even in the darkest moments, her soul was illuminated by the light of hope, which was provided by her friendship with Nellie. And she knew that together they would overcome all the trials that fate threw at them. Lacha, Nellie said, returning to the kitchen, I think it's time for you to try something new. What do you think about the IVF procedure? Eloisa looked up, her eyes sparkling with surprise. IVF? But it's so expensive and doesn't guarantee a 100% chance of success. Yes, of course, it's a challenging step, Nellie agreed, but I have a cousin on my father's side who went through it and now she's happy with two wonderful children. We can talk to her doctor, find out all the details. Every woman's body is a very complex and individual mechanism. Eloisa nodded slowly, feeling that something inside her was changing. This idea gave her new hope, a new purpose. Together with Nellie, they began to explore the possibilities, discuss options, and emotionally prepare Eloisa for this new step in their and Leon's struggle for a child. A few weeks later, they were already sitting in the reproductive health center, listening to the doctor's explanations and recommendations. Eloisa felt that this was exactly what she and her husband needed the chance they had been waiting for so long. Nellie squeezed her hand, supporting her friend. We're in this together, Lacha. We'll go through this together, like two strong women. And Eloisa felt that despite all the difficulties they would have to overcome, together with Nellie, they would be able to overcome all the discomfort and fears. Leon couldn't provide her with such special support. 
only a woman's support could fully soothe the tender heart of a desperate representative of the fairer sex. Leon, Eloise's husband, was always a supportive and caring partner. He was by her side at every stage of their struggle for a child. He was also aware of the idea of IVF and sought to support her in every possible way. However, in recent months, Leon had become heavily overloaded at work. He worked late into the night, trying to stay afloat in his career to provide financial stability for the family. This often made him absent from home and immersed in work even on weekends. Eloisa knew that Leon was doing this for them to secure their future, but she also felt that they were becoming more and more distant from each other because of his busyness. She missed his support and involvement in their marital life. Therefore, when Nelly suggested to Eloisa to try the IVF procedure, Eloisa felt that it could be a chance not only for them, but also for their relationship. She hoped that by focusing on this new stage together, they could restore their closeness and support for each other, as it was before. When Eloisa learned that she was expecting multiple babies, her heart swelled with joy and apprehension simultaneously. She had dreamed of children for so long that the news of not just one, but several little ones, made her feel elated. She immediately shared the news with Leon, hoping for his joy and support. However, his reaction was far from what she had expected. Leon was in shock. He felt something akin to horror due to financial instability and the immense responsibility of having so many children. We can't afford this, he said, his voice trembling so much that Eloisa felt her heart constrict. But, Leon, it's such a miracle, she tried to comfort him. We'll manage, we'll find ways to cope. After all, we've longed for children for so long, haven't we? Leon covered his face with his hands, his breathing becoming heavy. I don't know, Eloisa. We're just not ready for this. I'm afraid I won't be able to provide them with everything they need. And I'm afraid it'll be too much for both of us. Tears welled up in Eloise's eyes. She understood his fears, but she also felt that they couldn't turn away from this miracle that would enter their lives. But how could she convince Leon of this? How could she help him embrace this new challenge they were facing together? When Leon suggested abortion, Eloisa felt like her world was crumbling. She turned away from him, tears filling her eyes. Are you serious? She barely managed to utter. Leon stepped back, his face filled with worry and fear. He looked at the nearby dresser and his gaze fell on a framed photograph. In it, he saw their wedding picture. Leon couldn't bear to think that something could go wrong. He picked up the photograph and ran his fingers over the glass. I know this is hard for you, Lacha, but we have to think about our future, about our family. We can't risk it like this. We can't afford it. But these are our children, whispered Eloisa. They're already here, inside me. We can't. Leon interrupted her, his voice becoming loud and sharp. We can't afford this. I can't. An argument ensued, filled with tears, accusations, and disappointment. It pained them both to see their dreams and hopes shattered in a quarrel that only widened the rift between them. When words ran dry, they stood there, silently gazing at each other, experiencing the pain and disappointment they couldn't express in words. But in their hearts remained the same pain and the same hope that, despite everything, they would find a way to overcome this trial together. But her hopes were dashed. Several days later, after spending time in silence, Eloisa found her husband near an open suitcase. Something inside her collapsed at that moment, but she couldn't let the words escape her lips. I'm filing for divorce. File for alimony. I'll leave the apartment to you, he said, turning away from Eloisa, unwilling to meet her eyes at such a moment. I've already said I can't handle supporting three children. If you won't consider abortion, then you're not leaving me any choice. After an hour of packing, he left. The door closed softly behind him. Eloisa, engulfed in grief and disappointment, ran to her friend Elena, choking on tears and sorrow. She told her about the end of her marriage to Leon, about how they couldn't cope with the burden of a multiple pregnancy, and how it all led to their separation. Elena hugged her friend and tried to comfort her, supporting her in this difficult moment. 
But Elena's husband, Hugo, upon hearing about Leon, couldn't refrain from making bitter remarks. Leon is a coward, Hugo said, restraining his anger in his voice. He left you at the hardest moment. A real man doesn't run away from his responsibilities. Nelly and I have four kids. As you can see, I'm still here, proud to be a father of many. Eloisa only nodded silently, burying her face in her hands again to hide her tears. She felt her world crumbling, and at that moment, she needed support and understanding. Hugo's anger was directed at Leon, but poor Eloisa still couldn't shake off her feelings for him. So her friend's husband's words sounded extremely hurtful to her. Seeing that his words only intensified her pain, Hugo made a small decision. All right, Elena, he said, getting up. I'll hang around for a bit, play with the kids so they don't turn the apartment upside down. You girls need some time alone. Understanding her husband's hint, Elena nodded. She hugged Eloisa once again, promising her that they would always be there for her and that she didn't have to go through this alone. When Hugo left them, Eloisa cried in her friend's arms, realizing that she faced a long and difficult road to recovery after the divorce. But with the support of friends, she hoped she could overcome all the difficulties and emerge from this swamp. But then the question of livelihood arose. Leon assured Eloisa that he would be able to support the whole family independently. Of course, until the news of the number of children she carried in her womb came. For many years, Eloisa had been involved in creating a cozy home, not even thinking about going to work. Leon agreed to pay alimony, but that amount clearly wouldn't be enough for a normal life with three children. Elena's gaze fell on the wool skeins and thread scattered on the shelf in her cozy living room. She remembered how Eloisa used to spend hours knitting before her married life. It was not only her hobby, but also a source of income in the days when she was not yet married to Leon. Wait here, Eloisa, Elena said, getting up and heading to the shelf. She took several skeins of wool of different colors and returned to her friend, shining with an idea. Maybe it's time to revisit the past? Elena suggested with a smile, showing her the skeins. Do you remember how you used to knit and create beautiful things? You could try to get back to it. It could not only be a way to support yourself and the children, but also a good way to relax and forget about troubles for a while. Eloisa looked up, her expressive eyes gazing at the yarn balls with hope and gratitude towards her friend for such an idea. Yes, Elena, she replied, her voice sounding slightly more determined. It's worth a try. Maybe it will indeed help me provide for myself and the children. With these words, they embraced, feeling that not all was lost for lots yet. Eloise's first creations, lovingly crafted, Nellie decided to showcase to the mothers at the daycare where she took her older children. And, as expected by Elena, the women were absolutely delighted. They eagerly snatched up the finished vests and hats, leaving Nellie with quite a decent pay. That's when the two women realized this was exactly what a future mother of many children needed. With each passing day, interest in Eloise's work only grew. Rumors of her quality and unique creations spread throughout the daycare, and soon mothers from other groups also began to show interest in her work. Starting with small orders for sweaters, booties, and toys, Eloisa soon found herself overwhelmed with orders. People appreciated not only the beauty and coziness of her creations, but also the quality of her work. Each item was made with love and attention to detail, making them special and in demand. Lotch was thrilled with this turn of events. She happily took on orders, striving to meet the requests of each client. Her skill and talent brought not only joy and comfort to little children, but also confidence and financial support to her future family. With each new order, Lotch grew more confident in herself and her abilities. She realized that her hard work and creativity not only helped her support her family, but also brought joy and satisfaction. Soon she understood that this was not just a job, it was her calling, her way to bring light and joy into this world through her hands and creativity. Eloise's pregnancy was nearing its end, and with each passing day, it became increasingly difficult for her to handle the orders. Carrying three children at once put significant pressure on her body, and she had to conserve her strength. 
Seeing how difficult it was for her daughter, her mother, Marlene, expressed a desire to help her. However, due to arthritis, Marlene's fingers didn't cooperate well, making it difficult for her to actively participate in the knitting process. Stitches turned out weak, rose uneven. Even if the woman tried to knit slowly, without rushing, the result was the same. Mom, I really appreciate your willingness to help, said Eloisa, hugging her mother, who wore a warm woolen shawl draped over her shoulders, which the young Lotch had knitted for her back in her school years. But I don't want you to strain yourself or feel upset. Your health is the most important thing to me. We will find another way to solve this situation. Marlene smiled and stroked her daughter's cheek. Her arthritis-affected fingers always felt unnaturally warm due to the illness. The affliction felt unpleasant too, her joints literally burned from within. Thank you, dear. I just want to help you in every possible way. Unfortunately, my crafting years are behind me. But, of course, we'll find a solution together. Eloise and Marlene sat down together and discussed possible options. They decided it was important to find additional help to relieve Eloise and ease her workload burden. It was decided to turn to neighbors and friends for assistance, as well as to consider the possibility of temporarily hiring an assistant. But disappointment awaited the expectant mother again. Neighbors and acquaintances refused to help Eloise. Some cited a lack of skills, some didn't want to bother with teaching the art of knitting, and some outright said, I don't want to. The assistant situation wasn't smooth either. Hiring required money, which was already being spent on preparing the nursery, Eloise's prenatal examinations, and purchasing materials for fulfilling orders. Eloise found herself in a difficult position. She understood that she needed help, especially as she got closer to her due date, but there were no means for it. However, Eloise was determined and persistent. Instead of despairing, she decided to use every resource available to her as effectively as possible. She began to organize her time and energy to tackle all tasks, despite the lack of external assistance. She cut expenses, meticulously planned every step, and tried to optimize her activities to achieve maximum productivity. Eloise understood that she would have to work twice as hard to cope with all the challenges, but she was ready for it, knowing that ultimately it would be worth it to secure the best future for herself and her future children. Elena and Hugo couldn't be blamed for the lack of help. Right now, Eloise didn't even dare to approach the couple with questions. One of the twins caught some cold at daycare and then infected everyone else. Elena ran from the pharmacy to home, and at home, she jumped from crib to crib. For Nellie, knitting was certainly the last thing on her mind right now. Oh God, give me strength, the woman groaned from exhaustion. Every time some mom doesn't want to stay with a sick child, she sends them to daycare and voila, we're all sick. And I got infected too. Eloise realized she was practically left without support and time for all her responsibilities. In such a situation, she had to seek alternative solutions. One option was to seek help from outside. Eloise could turn to other relatives or even try to hire someone temporarily, although this could require additional financial expenses, of which she already had little. She could also consider delegating some orders or tasks to friends if they could find time to help. Although it might not be easy, given Elena and Hugo's busy schedules, and a situation where Eloise had no other options, it would be her last hope. So she immediately turned to her friend when her children recovered. Unfortunately, it turned out that Nellie was simply unteachable when it came to knitting. She sincerely didn't understand the intricacies of it, and the booties she managed to knit with difficulty only elicited laughter. When Elena apologized to Lotch for the wasted time and yarn, Eloise felt a mixture of disappointment and acceptance. She understood that Elena had tried to help and support her, but now that she realized Elena couldn't offer help in knitting, Eloise felt even more helpless and lonely. One day, as the woman checked her mailbox, along with the utility bill, she found a strange letter. Opening it, she was horrified. It was a request from a notary for a personal conversation to clarify inheritance details. And the inheritance was from her father? She looked at the name and didn't understand what was happening. Why was someone with an unfamiliar name referred to as her father? 
Receiving such an unexpected letter, Lotch felt a sudden pang in her heart. Her initial reaction was panic and disbelief. It was strange to see mention of her father's death in a letter when he was alive and well. With worry and confusion, Lotch immediately called her father, Francisco, to find out more. Answering the call, her father became awkward in communication, literally from the first mention of the inheritance. He couldn't explain what was happening. At the same time, the thought kept spinning in Lotch's head that this could be a mistake. Perhaps someone sent the letter by sheer chance. However, her father's uncooperative behavior only raised more questions. Lotch's heart was full of mixed feelings, fear, anxiety, and confusion. She understood that she needed to find out the truth and figure out this situation, but the feeling of uncertainty and mystery surrounded her like a dark cloud. Some ominous premonition lingered in her mind, as if this letter, in fact, directly concerned her. Experiencing a mix of vague feelings and anxiety, Eloise decided it was important to discuss the situation immediately with her parents. She warned her mother and father that she would come to them for a serious conversation. The seriousness in her voice and the urgency in her steps were unmistakable signs that something serious had happened. Marlene and Francisco, feeling the unusual tension in their daughter's voice, agreed to the meeting and expressed their willingness to listen to her. When Eloise arrived at her parents' home, tension hung in the air. Everyone was ready to hear what had happened and help their daughter understand the situation. Sitting together at the table in the living room, Eloise began to recount the strange letter she had received. She described her feelings and confusion, as well as her conversation with her father, who seemed to be hiding something important from her. Seeing her mother's nervous state, Eloise realized that the situation was serious and perhaps related to something her parents wanted to hide from her. She decided to directly ask her visibly distressed mother about everything that was happening between them. Mom, you look as if you're guilty of murder, Eloise said, addressing her mother. Please, tell me, do you know something? Why is Dad silent? Marlene sighed, feeling she could no longer hide the truth from her daughter. Struggling to hold back tears, she began to recount being one of the first to learn about the letter. It was hard to miss the news of the death of her first husband. Learning that Francisco wasn't Eloise's biological father and that the inheritance letter pertained to the death of her real father, Julio, made the situation even more complex and emotionally charged. Sweetheart, before your father, I was married to another man. She nervously clutched a kitchen towel in her hands. These things happen. People divorce, disappear from each other's lives. You know that yourself. So, you've been silent all these years? About me being born from someone whose name I just happened to learn by chance, from a notary's note? Eloisa was shaken by what she heard. Everything in her life seemed to be crumbling simultaneously, her pregnancy, complicated relationship with her ex-husband, and now this family crisis. Marlene felt shame and guilt towards her daughter for concealing important details of her past. She realized that her silence had caused pain to Eloisa and deeply regretted it. But she also understood that it was done in hopes of protecting her family from the difficulties of the past. Facing the consequences of his silence, Francisco felt defenseless and guilty towards his daughter. Although she wasn't his biological daughter, he spiritually felt like her rightful father. It was hard for him to realize that his hidden truth had inflicted so much pain on his beloved daughter. For Eloisa, this news was a real shock. She felt like her whole life had been built on lies and secrets. However, in her heart, there also stirred a desire for understanding and forgiveness. She understood that her parents acted as they saw fit, and now it was important to find ways to overcome the difficult situation together. And what do we do now? All of us? The couple exchanged glances. Concealing the truth from a child was inhumane to some extent especially to simply separate her from her biological father. Julio wasn't. I can't say he was a bad person. But things happened. Francisco rubbed his weary neck, trying to overcome the feeling of shame. We're terribly guilty, Lacha. And we'll be guilty before you for the rest of our lives. 
All we can do is hope that you'll understand us, because I so wanted you to consider only me your father, that this selfishness simply blinded me. And your mother. I also wanted Francisco to be the only one in your life. Marlene timidly interrupted her husband. I, out of youthfulness or foolishness, thought it would be better. For all of us, and especially for you, darling. Accepting her parents, flawed as they were, Eloisa decided to muster the courage to ask questions that had been bothering her lately, foremost among them being about her real father, Julio. She asked her parents to tell her about her father, especially about the reasons why they never told her anything about him. Marlene and Francisco, looking into their daughter's eyes, realized it was time to reveal the truth. We worked together with Julio. He was my replacement. Moreover, we were friends. For a while, of course, the man stood up to pour himself some water. The whole situation made him thirsty. Simple guy, but terribly fickle. It was hard to imagine someone his age being so carefree. There's nothing awful to say about him, Lacha. Julio and I got married just a couple of months after we met. I was young, in love, I wasn't thinking about weighing my decisions. Marlene's gaze swept across the table as she began speaking of youthful mistakes. When I got pregnant six months into our marriage, I was incredibly happy. I really wanted children. I wanted a full family, with a husband and children. But, Julio didn't share my dreams. He just left. Without a word, without warning. I just woke up one morning and he was gone. Only a couple of days later, I received a letter from the court. He even filed for divorce without looking me in the eye. He paid child support, but he never showed any interest in you. I found out from acquaintances that he simply changed jobs and moved to the other end of the city. Eloisa felt disappointment but also sympathy. She realized that life and relationships could be complex and tangled, and that her parents had done everything they could to protect her from the pain of the past. The man continued his story, gently embracing his wife's shoulders. When Marlene came to work to find out anything about Julio, I understood everything. Your mother already had a round belly visible. Julio didn't even mention a word to me, he just quit and that was it. He knew I would be furious at his actions. I still, somewhere deep down, feel just inexplicable bewilderment. How could he abandon his pregnant wife? Francisco frowned slightly. I felt sorry for Marlene. We started talking, then dating. I picked her up from the maternity hospital. And just a couple of years later, I decided I wanted to be a support for this woman and her little girl. So we got married. We decided among ourselves that it would be better to establish paternity on me. And the rest you already know. Listening to her parents' story, Eloisa also understood that her own situation wasn't all that unique. She saw parallels between the destinies of her parents and her own life, and it helped her better empathize with her parents' history. Together, they discuss their feelings and experiences, find support in each other, and are ready to move forward, accepting the truth and seeking ways to forgive and heal. Learning about the contents of the inheritance, Eloisa felt strange. On one hand, she was surprised by the small size of the inheritance, which turned out to be disproportionate to the expectations associated with her childless father's life. On the other hand, she felt respect for Julio for still deciding to remember his only child. He could have left no will, let the state deal with the deceased's property independently. But no, from the notary, Lacha learned that, dying from illness, Julio made the iron decision to leave everything to his daughter. Eloisa understood that these modest inherited funds would not change her life, but they held a certain symbolic value for her. It was her real father who left her not only a small material inheritance, but also the understanding that happiness and wealth could be found not in money, but in family. Similar sentiments could be found in his farewell letter, where he apologized to Marlena. But most of all, he expressed regret for leaving his child to the whims of fate. Having lived a bachelor's life, only feeling the bony hand of death on his shoulder, he realized that all of it was utterly meaningless. With the support of her parents and friends, Eloisa decided to use these funds with respect and prudence. She understood that their worth lay not in money, 
but in reminding her of her roots and that true wealth often lies within us and our relationships, memories, and life perspectives. Upon receiving this money, Eloisa resolved to use it wisely and purposefully. Knowing that she now had the opportunity to hire assistants, she sought out the most experienced and talented individuals in the knitting field. Eloisa began an active search through various channels, reaching out to local crafting communities, posting job vacancies on social media, and considering hiring through specialized internet platforms. She emphasized the experience and professionalism of potential assistants, understanding that the quality of work was paramount. Eloisa wanted her orders to be completed with quality and on time to maintain her reputation and satisfy her customers' needs. Thanks to her determination and ability to make informed decisions, Eloisa quickly found several experienced craftsmen willing to join her team. She was confident that with their help, she could efficiently manage orders and grow her knitting business. Eloisa made the decision to leave her children's clothing knitting business in the hands of experienced craftsmen and focus on her health and the safety of her future children. Following doctors' advice to be hospitalized due to a multiple pregnancy and all associated risks, she realized it was the best thing she could do for herself and her little ones. Knowing that her business was in reliable hands, Eloisa felt relief and confidence. She knew her orders would be completed with quality and on time, thanks to the professionalism of her assistants. This allowed her to focus on an important stage of her life and prepare for the birth of triplets. In the maternity ward, Eloisa was surrounded by the care and attention of medical staff, and she could be assured that her condition and health were under control. During this time, she prayed for the well-being of her future children and thanked fate for the support during such a challenging period of life. The recovery period after childbirth turned out to be successful for Eloisa. Despite the childbirth process not being entirely smooth due to the stress she endured, the doctors did an excellent job and managed to preserve both the mother's health and that of all three children. Eloisa felt gratitude and relief as she watched her assistants continue to successfully fulfill orders in her absence. This gave her confidence in the future of her business and allowed her to focus on the most important thing, her little family. Eloise's parents eagerly awaited photos of their grandchildren, preparing to welcome them into their arms. Elena and Hugo were also eager to support Eloisa and her new family in this crucial moment. Everyone important to Eloisa greeted her at the maternity ward. Parents, friends, even Elena and Hugo's twins. But among these people, Leon was absent. Moreover, he hadn't even read the message in which she informed him of the birth of the children. Despite the betrayal, Eloisa still hoped for some word from her ex-husband. It was very difficult for Eloisa to accept a simple truth. Seeing her ex-husband's behavior, she realized that it was impossible to build a happy future with someone who showed no interest in her children and didn't want to be involved in their lives. With this realization came the liberation from the burden of the past and hope for a bright future for her and her children. Although it was a bitter awakening, it also became the foundation for new opportunities and a fresh start. Now, freed from loss and disappointment, Eloisa could focus on her family, her children, and her own well-being. She decided to move forward with optimism and determination, ready to embrace all the challenges and joys that the new chapter of her life would bring. Marlene's decision to temporarily stay with her daughter to help her with the three babies was a real blessing for Eloisa. The newborn triplets demanded a lot of attention and care, and maternal support was invaluable. Marlene not only helped with childcare, but also shared her experience and advice on motherhood. Her presence gave strength during this first, challenging period. At the same time, Eloisa slowly but surely returned to her work knitting. She found time for it when the babies were sleeping, and this process brought her not only satisfaction of creative need, but also helped her relax and take a break from childcare responsibilities. Thus, thanks to the joint efforts and support of her family, Eloisa learned to cope with new roles, being a mother of three children and an entrepreneur. Slowly but surely, step by step, she moved forward, building her family and professional life. For a while, finances were rapidly growing. The interior of the apartment changed, purchased items became more expensive. 
Even the yarn for orders was bought from increasingly high-quality materials. But at some point, Eloisa hit a dead end. Income stopped growing. There was a need to further develop her small business, but she didn't know what it required. Then Chance intervened. An email from an interesting young man who was attracted by the success of a woman with an unexpected business idea. Receiving an intriguing offer from investor Manuel Marges, Eloise felt excitement and hope for new opportunities for her business. She agreed to a meeting, preparing to present her business and listen to proposals for collaboration. During the meeting, Manuel Marges expressed admiration for Eloise's products and their potential in the market. He shared his vision for business development and proposed investing in production and expanding the product range. Eloise attentively listened to the investors' proposals, asking important questions and discussing potential development strategies. She felt that this could be an excellent opportunity for her business to reach a new level and unleash its potential. Eventually, after careful discussion of the collaboration details, Eloise and Manuel reached a partnership agreement that opened new horizons for the development of her small business. It was an important step in her entrepreneurial journey, and she was ready to embrace the challenge and move forward. Manuel was a handsome man. It must be acknowledged that he wasn't overly attractive, but the depth of his dark brown eyes calmly compensated for any flaws in his appearance. This gaze, thoughtful and somewhat dreamy, literally made the head spin of the busy mother of three. And Manuel didn't lag behind in his sympathy towards women. It became evident that the course towards closeness in their relationship was unavoidable. Besides strictly business meetings, the everyday life of the curious couple was supplemented with leisurely walks in the park. And the massive stroller, in which three little angels napped, didn't repel the man in the slightest. Eloise was only curious about how such a successful young man could still be single. Eloisa learned from Manuel that over the ten years he spent married to another woman, he never managed to have children. Doctors had diagnosed him as infertile. The diagnosis devastated the man who desperately wanted to start a family and hear children's laughter in his home. Upon learning about his wife's pregnancy, he immediately divorced the adulteress, who didn't even bother to resist and quickly ran off to a new wealthy sugar daddy, from whom she promptly began extracting money. Manuel was left completely alone, deceived and betrayed. For ten years, I was just her passive source of income, sighed the man sadly, rocking the triplet stroller. And infertile on top of it. Ha! A lifetime of wealth, without the burden of children. Learning about Manuel's complex and tragic past, Eloisa felt deep sympathy for him. She understood it had been a difficult ordeal for him and was grateful that he had chosen to share this personal secret with her. For Eloise, it was yet another confirmation of how strong and resilient Manuel was, overcoming all the difficulties and disappointments in his life. She saw in him not only a successful businessman, but also a man with a big heart and good intentions. The revelation about his previous marriage only strengthened their bond, bringing them even closer together. Eloise was ready to support Manuel in his emotional and spiritual recovery from past hardships, just as he supported her. Thus, their relationship became even stronger thanks to mutual trust and openness, and they were ready to face all the challenges and joys of life ahead of them. The couple soon got engaged. Manuel's friends and acquaintances split into two camps. Some understood how much of a family man he was, loving children, while others considered him a fool. But the newlyweds didn't care about any rumors. Their union gave them everything, confidence in each other, love, and a sense of complete family happiness. But six years later, when it was time to send the triplets to school, Eloise felt familiar symptoms. She had long tried to ignore them, constantly reminding herself of her husband's infertility. But nature couldn't be deceived, nor could blood tests. Eloise was pregnant. What? It can't be. Manuel exclaimed. God, I'm cursed to be a fool forever. Manuel's outburst of anger and despair was quite understandable. The news of the pregnancy triggered shock and uncertainty in him. His past relationship experiences tied him to painful memories. But Manuel understood that the situation with Eloise was different from his previous marriage, and he sought to approach everything more carefully. 
When Manuel managed to control his emotions, he turned to Eloise to discuss their future together. He expressed his concerns and questions, but also showed willingness to support her and stand by her side during this challenging period. Darling, I know what happened in your past. But it seems to me that last time everything was not entirely clean, Eloise cautiously approached Manuel, who was so distressed that he lay on the bed, staring at the high readings on the blood pressure monitor. Anyone will tell you that I have neither the desire nor the time for an affair. We need to go to the clinic again. Okay? The man nodded silently. Together they turned to the doctor to understand the reasons for the pregnancy. And it turned out that Manuel's infertility in the past was nothing but a fiction. According to the tests, he was never infertile. The spouses exchanged glances, still puzzled. After a long silent shock, a strange idea occurred to Eloise. Maybe you should ask your ex? Eloise took her husband's hand, noticing how he was about to object. It's just all so strange, unnatural. Maybe. She didn't deceive you only with infidelity? After some more doubt, the man agreed with his wife. He still had his ex-wife's number in his contacts. It took several attempts to get through. Of course, it did, as a happy life with a new wealthy man was surely more exciting than news from the ex-husband. But eventually, the woman picked up. Eloise left her husband alone not to embarrass him with her presence. From the kitchen, she heard snippets of phrases and then barely restrained screams from Manuel. She understood that he was furious, but she didn't interfere. Traumas from the past needed to be dealt with with minimal external intervention. After a while, the man literally stormed into the kitchen. His face was red with anger and his eyes showed genuine disappointment. She bribed the doctors. All these years, she just paid them while she herself was on birth control. He downed the glass of whiskey that Eloise had prepared for him in one gulp. Ten years. Ten years I considered myself an incomplete man while she enjoyed life. This discovery was shocking for Manuel and Eloise. Understanding that many personal and important aspects of Manuel's life had been built on lies evoked anger and pain. Suddenly, all the past events in Manuel's life took on new meaning, and his first marriage and its end became logical. Manuel felt deceived and betrayed, but instead of dwelling on feelings of resentment and revenge, he decided to focus on the present and future with Eloise. He realized that their love and family bonds were not dependent on past deceptions. Eloise was shaken by these revelations, but her love for Manuel and belief in their family's happiness remained unwavering. She decided to support Manuel in all his decisions and be there for him in this difficult time. Yet now you know the truth, she gently smiled, looking into the man's eyes and placing his hand on her stomach, and soon you will have a child. Your own child, the one you always dreamed of. Together, they decided to leave the past behind and focus on their family's well-being and future. This discovery marked a new beginning for them. Meanwhile, Leon had spent all these years alone. Sometimes he would enter relationships, but they never lasted long. He still struggled with the aftermath of his divorce. Despite his actions, he genuinely loved Eloise. He just lacked courage at the right moment. After a while, he began noticing advertisements around the city. The brand of children's clothing Big Little Club featured the face of his ex-wife on those same banners. Leon suddenly pondered. Was it worth it for him to run away from his wife back then? Maybe now he would be part of that brand. And they would handle it with the children. The man decided that he owed it to himself to meet with his ex-wife. He gathered a whole bag of children's toys, bought a huge bouquet of flowers, and returned to the apartment he left seven years ago. But no one answered the door. Instead, Elena reacted to the commotion. Oh, who do we have here? The woman leaned against the doorframe, looking arrogantly at her best friend's ex-husband. Seems like someone's ready for fatherhood, huh? Elena, stop. Leon shuddered at the situation, clutching the bag and flowers in his hands. Where's Lacha? I wanted to see her. Nelly smirked mockingly. She moved slowly, gracefully, every movement revealing undisguised mockery towards the man. 
She turned somewhere down the hallway, then handed Leon a piece of paper with an address. When the man reached out to take it, Elena abruptly pulled her hand away, not allowing the traitor to grab the piece of paper. Watch it, her jaws about to drop, she sneered, idiot. Leon snatched the paper from the hands of his former neighbor but didn't say anything to her. He knew well that the guilty one had no right to show his teeth. The address led him to an elite neighborhood. After wandering a bit among the perfectly manicured lawns, the man stopped at a mailbox, the nameplate matching the handwritten address from Nellie. He walked up to the door along the stone path and pressed the doorbell. Eloise opened the door, but Leon quickly stopped smiling. In her arms, his ex-wife held a little son, who now had nothing to do with his father's trio under any circumstances. Leon? Why are you here? I. I. The man lowered his head, then awkwardly handed his ex-wife the bouquet and toys. These are for you and the kids. Couldn't think of anything better. The woman looked at the gifts with confusion, shifting her son to one arm to free the other to take the bag and flowers. She still had no idea why her ex-husband was on her doorstep. Listen, thanks for the gifts. There's no problem with child support. I'm putting it into a savings account to give to the kids later. They're already at school. They don't even know you. Lacha frowned skeptically. What do you need? I don't want to dredge up the past. Don't get me wrong. I've forgiven you, but seeing you doesn't bring me any joy. Please respect my right to happiness and my new family and leave. He didn't have a chance to say anything before the woman disappeared from his sight. Leon stood before the closed door, feeling conflicting emotions spreading inside him. Confusion and incomprehension made him reflect on his own actions and what he had missed in his life. The future he had carelessly abandoned seven years ago now looked entirely different. The woman he had left had found new happiness and become the mother of four beautiful children. It was a lesson for Leon, a lesson about the value of family and love that he would remember for a long time. Finally, Leon came to understand that his actions were mistaken and impulsive. He regretted missing the chance to be with the family he had so thoughtlessly abandoned. With these thoughts, Leon turned and headed towards his car. He knew he couldn't change the past anymore, but he could learn from his mistakes and move forward, hoping for a better future. Eloisa told Manuel about Leon's visit, describing her feelings and emotions during their meeting. She expressed her gratitude to her husband for his support and for always being there in such moments. Manuel listened attentively, understanding that this meeting had been difficult for her. He hugged his wife and promised to be there if such situations recurred. He also expressed his disapproval of Leon's behavior, but at the same time emphasized the importance of focusing on the present. It doesn't matter why he came. What matters is that he's gone, Manuel grumbled dryly. And let's hope he never comes back. The measured life of the large family returned to its smooth flow. The children grew, the spouses loved each other, and their children's clothing brand became increasingly popular among moms. A year later, Eloisa was stunned by Leon's sudden return and his proposal for cooperation. The emotions from such an event were hard to describe, but above all, she was surprised by his offer. In a year, Leon had achieved the opening of his own yarn factory. In exchange for a lucrative contract, he only asked for permission to communicate with the children. Eloisa suddenly recognized in herself mixed feelings, from old resentment and disappointment to curiosity and some interest in the proposal. On one hand, Eloisa felt she wasn't ready to trust Leon again, especially after his betrayal. On the other hand, she understood that cooperation with his factory could bring new opportunities and growth prospects for her business. However, the most important thing for Eloisa was the well-being of her family, including her four children. She felt that the issue of the right to communicate with the triplets should not be part of any deal or contract. For her, it was too personal and important to negotiate. Eloisa decided to discuss the proposal with Manuel and together make the decision that would be best for their family and business. She was willing to listen to Leon and discuss possible collaboration options, but still maintain her principles and personal boundaries. Manuel, on the other hand, felt strong dissatisfaction and even disappointment regarding Leon's proposal. 
It was unpleasant for him even to think about Eloise's ex-husband interfering in their lives again after all that had happened. His certainty that Leon had hurt Eloisa and acted unfairly was entirely understandable. Manuel understood the importance of closing a contract with a supplier, but he also felt that he didn't want to see Leon back in their lives. It was important for him to protect and support Eloisa, and he worried that her re-encounter with Leon could cause her additional emotional trauma. Manuel decided to openly express his feelings to Eloise and discuss with her how they could resolve this situation together. He wanted her to feel supported by him and to find the best solution for their family and business together. This man just left you alone, pregnant, after all the stories about how much he wanted children, he reminded Eloise of her past, not with ill intent, and now you want to entrust him with business dealings? Want to trust him with the business? Darling, this is a very strange decision. I know, but after all, he did decide to come back for some reason. He opened the factory in such a short time. He's asking for communication with the children. Eloise paced the room from corner to corner, her hands folded on her chest. Seven years ago, I found out that my father wasn't my biological father at all. And it was just a nightmare. I was so confused, so angry with my mom. It's just indescribable. I don't want the same fate for my children, Manuel. It's wrong. You're right. It's all very wrong, whichever way you look at it. Eloise suggested to Manuel and Leon to meet in person to discuss Leon's proposal and to clarify his true motives. She felt it was important to discuss this together to understand how they could move forward and what this proposal meant for each of them. Eloise also understood that Leon might have something to tell or explain. His sudden desire to communicate with the children surprised her, and she wanted to understand what led him to this decision. She hoped the meeting would help resolve all misunderstandings and find ways to cooperate, if possible, while still maintaining their own boundaries and interests. During the meeting in the office, Leon began his explanation, admitting that initially, his motives were selfish, hoping for personal gain upon returning to his ex-wife. He confessed that seeing advertising banners with Eloise and Manuel's brand, he succumbed to the temptation to grab a piece of that fortune. However, when he saw Eloise with a little child in her arms, his priorities shifted drastically. I realized that Lotch got married again. I realized that some man found the strength to stay with three children, not even his own. The man raised his eyebrows in amazement, and I ran away. Like a coward. That moment at the doorstep clearly made him understand that money and material goods were nothing compared to family happiness and love. He realized that his previous plans and desires were empty and selfish, and he deeply regretted it. Leon expressed his sincere repentance to Eloise and Manuel for his actions and expressed his willingness to correct his mistakes and try to rebuild relationships with the children if they wanted it. Feeling Manuel's dissatisfaction, Leon tried to lighten the mood with his comment. Manuel, you're a real man, and I won't ever try to overshadow your role in the children's lives. You should be the main figure in their lives, as you're their real father. And I'm just, well, a father, just genetic material, he chuckled nervously, loosening his dark blue tie to give himself room to breathe, but understand, I'm still not the last person in their lives and I really want to make amends to them and to Lotch. Eloisa and Manuel carefully listened to his words and accepted them, albeit not without some doubts. They understood the importance of their children having the opportunity to communicate with both parents and agreed to give Leon a chance to amend his actions and re-enter their lives, but with caution and deliberation. You know, I've decided to change my life and dedicate myself to business solely for the sake of the children. This decision to start anew and try to replicate Eloise's success gives me strength and motivation. After all, if a pregnant woman abandoned in such a horrible situation managed to handle such an incredible challenge, then a healthy single man can certainly achieve something worthwhile. I want to instill in my children the same confidence and belief in their own abilities that I found while overcoming difficulties and obstacles in my life. My main goal is to set an example for my children of how to overcome difficulties and achieve success in life through perseverance, hard work, and self-belief. 
Eloisa and Manuel listened to his words with respect and understanding, seeing in them Leon's sincere desire to change and become a better father for his children. Dear viewers, if you enjoyed the story, please support the video by liking it and leaving a comment. Thank you very much.